Katie, I think we can all agree this in the, th the thick of it was the, the TV show that perhaps mostly closely emulated what Theresa May was up to yesterday. How did it go so wrong? Oh, Julia, I don't know where to start, and I don't think we've got enough time on air to, to go through every individual uh, piece. It just went wrong from start to finish. It went wrong from the briefing at the weekend because people didn't quite know whether or not this, this stuff was accurate. Uh, Telegraph had a lead story on the front page yesterday saying there was going to be a no-deal uh, Brexit secretary, which got, which got everybody a bit confused because we thought this was meant to be a reset on the domestic agenda. Um, and then it unraveled from there onwards, as you say, from the mistakes with the wrong announcements. And it just got worse and worse. I mean, in fact, I think that she wanted to go further than she ended up doing yesterday, but she probably bottled it because it got too much in the end. Um, and what we'll see today is a raft of new appointments um, from the 2010 and 2015 intake and, and possibly even some, some MPs that have only been in, in the job six months uh, to keep everybody happy. It'll be you know, the bad carriers of the bad carriers and bad carriers. And if I was them, I'd probably turn around and say, actually, looking at the state of all this, thanks, but no thanks. I'd rather be a backbencher right now. And, and not have to carry the can or anyone's bag, as you say. But this is it. I mean, there, there weren't many new exciting appointments. I mean, Brandon Lewis's new Tory chair bring a bit more youth and energy than Patrick McLaughlin, uh, who a very, very solid old hand on the job. Um, and certainly um, James Cleverley, a regular on this show, as his vice, uh, vice chairman, as deputy chairman, uh, a lot of people very happy with that appointment. But what was extraordinary, and this is the thing I don't understand, having, I, you know, I've been saying, covering politics for many years and You've been involved very closely at the top level for many years as well. The idea that I, as Prime Minister, invite in one of my members of the Cabinet and I say, I'm going to move you to X job. Now, there are two answers to that. There's, there's I don't want that job, and there's I resign, uh, you know, or I take that job. That's that's it. The idea that the likes of, of you know, of Justin Greening was in, well, she was in Downing Street for about sort of three hours, wasn't she? Greg Clark, the business secretary, Jeremy Hunt, the health secretary. The idea that these people can somehow tell the prime minister, their boss, what job they want to have, I find absolutely extraordinary. Well, the thing is, Julia, you and I are political geeks and we stick, stick to this stuff really closely. But people at home only pick up... A people with lives and jobs, home. yes. You know, people, with, people in the real life, in the real world, um, they only pick up a snippet of what's going on. What have they picked up today? That Theresa May isn't in control of her own cabinet. She's got to sit around that cabinet table with everybody thinking, well, actually, I told you what to do yesterday and that's not the way it should be. What is also striking in terms of the chaotic nature of the way it's been run is that... Uh, you, if you knew you were going to move Jeremy Hunt or you were going to move to Greg Clark, then you would have, you know, your team, set of old hands, people that have been through reshuffles before, they would have had those quiet words in the corridors, a little quick cup of coffee to say, you know, warm it up in advance. I think these ministers had not heard a thing until they were called in to be told they were going to be moved. You do all of that work in, in advance. You, you make sure that it lands well on the day. You don't just leave it to chance and actually then it's, people start arguing for the next two hours as to what job they, they might or might not accept. It just totally unraveled because obviously the prep hadn't been done, but the control was not there and then people think they can take advantage. I don't think I, I would... I can't imagine people going in saying to Tony Blair, no, mate, actually, and I want to sit here for the next two hours to a row with you about it. Well, exactly. Well, uh, Tony Blair, forward. he would have had Alistair Campbell at his side saying, now sod off out. But this is the thing. When you look at the likes of... Like, I'm, I'm rather sad about Justin Greening going because she was, like me, a comp girl. And I've always had this issue with people who are running schools and telling people what kind of schools they should have. If you've not sat in a comprehensive uh, uh, classroom, like, you know, was it 80... No, is it 93% of us in this country? And like the people who've, uh, who've gone to private schools uh, and or many have gone to grammar schools, you don't really understand what it's like and what, and what is missing in, in those schools. But the, the idea that Greg Clark, who is business secretary, the idea Greg Clark would not be, rec he's not even a household name in his own household, for God's sake. The idea that Greg Clark can, dis can dictate what job he gets in the cabinet, I find laughable. And Jeremy Hunt is one of the most unpopular cabinet ministers in the country. The idea that she can't move Jeremy Hunt at her whim or sack him, I find extraordinary. What does, what does Jeremy Hunt have on Theresa May that she can't get move him from health secretary? And indeed promoted him by giving him social care as well. Well, what people at home will think is actually that this is just uh, another sign of reminding, it's a reminder to everybody that 2017 was an awful year for the Prime Minister and 2018 hasn't really started off much better either. Yep. This was meant to be a reset. This was meant to be the moment where she turns around and says, right, I'm in control. You guys, you know, no one's challenged me here. I am still your Prime Minister. I choose the cabinet that I wish to leave this country and we will go forward and we will do X, Y and Z. And instead, it's reminded us of all the bad stuff from last year that we went away at the Christmas break and came back hoping to forget and try and start afresh and try and start new. 
what she will realise when she comes to the weekend and the Sunday papers and she will look back on the week, she will realise she should never have done it at all. And, and this is the issue, though, because we look, we had, you know, the calling of the election. We, we, we you know, the election campaign, the manifesto fiasco. We had the, the uh, uh, party conference speech fiasco. It's, it's nonstop. At some point, maybe this just isn't bad luck. Maybe this isn't one mistake. Maybe there is just a level of incompetence at the top of this government. Which which is totally undermining it. I mean, now whether someone is a Tory or Labour or Lib Dem or UKIP or Green or whatever they are, at the end of the day, we all, it is in all of our interest that our country is competently governed. And whether you're Brexit or Remain, it is in all of our interest that there is a good negotiating position from the government for Brexit. You know, what, or whatever scenario. In, in which case, you know, we are all being failed by this government. I think that, that you've hit the nail on the head, Julia. And also, if you, I was the Labour Party right now, I'd say diddly squat. I'd shut up, go on holiday for a week, um, have a nice, get a nice sand tan, come back. And they would have, Conservatives can hang themselves on this. They don't need the Labour to dig, dig themselves deeper for them. They don't need the Labour to do anything right now. And that's the state of the country, that, that, that the opposition don't need to, to be constantly at it. They can just sit back and watch the Conservatives screw it up for themselves. And, and so what we need to look at is that OK, party conference, you know, it was chaotic. The set fell apart. You can't help the fact that she was coughing, you know, give her a break. But when you look at the content in the speech, it's utterly uninspiring. Um, and now we start to see a, a pattern whereby quite possibly she, she can't get a grip of the big set pieces, but also she's not being best served uh, by the advisors around her. Now, I've made it very clear and put on record several times my unhappiness with the people that I used to work with at number 10 uh, back, back last year. But one thing in their favour, they would never have let these car crashes happen. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and that is the thing, isn't it? And you've been sort of very critical of those people who were who who were around her at the time of the general election. But this is a, why, with a new broom, I mean, the people, we, director of communications now, uh, you know, we are talking about somebody who's been involved at the highest level in the media, at the BBC and elsewhere. Who, Michael Robbie Gibb, he absolutely knows what he's doing. So how has this been allowed to happen? This wouldn't have happened under Alistair Campbell. It wouldn't have happened um, even even Gordon Brown's worst moments. It wasn't this bad. I mean. This is some. This is like something out of a political satire. Can it? Can it realistically be rescued? Because she does. Theresa May does have good moments. Her interview with Andrew Marr on Sunday morning. I have to say, I thought was she was. She came across really well. I thought she, you know, and, and I've had loads of tweets from people in the last twenty four hours saying, you know, I voted for this woman. People are saying, and 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 I really believe. I thought, you know, she had a lot to say, and she, and they've just been disappointed. That, you know, week after week after week. Is it time for Theresa May to just say, do you know what? I can't do this. I'm not up to it. I haven't I haven't got a plan. I haven't got a vision. I haven't got managed. I mean, she hasn't got the vision or the managerial skills, in which case, is it time she just gave way to someone who perhaps can do it better? Well, I think we've got a big problem right now is that where are all of our big political personalities gone and who can lead this country? And I don't think we're swimming in options. And I think the Conservative Party probably needs a little bit more time to find that person to replace her. Um, she does have some amazing skill sets, actually. And when she shine she really is, is up there with the best i've seen some her deliver some brilliant speeches i've seen her do brilliant negotiation where she has basically stopped it if you if you wind yourself back and think about that press conference with donald trump she rolled him into a commitment to nato when he'd been saying for yeah. weeks that he wasn't going to oh, spend any money on nato until and the gonna, hand you know, until the hand holding it had gone brilliantly well you can't you know you can't do everything. no no i understand I but that's it. That just day and i was thinking oh it was all going so well. Yeah. It was all going so well, and then the handholding took place. But she, she's, she's, she's quite steely like that, and she will. She's quite determined. She's got an amazing sense of public duty, and um, I don't think this is necessarily all her fault. But at the same time, I have spent a year, you know, saying, oh well, you know, advisors and this that, and the other. She has, she has to take some of the blame. She has to get a grip. She has to be very forceful. Okay. Today, if I was Theresa May, I would roll out a very big eye-catching announcement that I've got in my back pocket and, and I'd write drum recent agenda and I would try almost to make a joke of it and say, well, that didn't go too well, but have a look at this. 
Yeah, but there's only so many times you can do that. Well, maybe maybe the big announcement, the helpful big announcement is Toby Young's resignation from the regulator board. Eh? Uh, just finally, Katie, everyone goes on and on about how, well, in fact, she you know, she briefed it out. Her people briefed it out at the, on Sunday about how there were going to be more ethnic minorities, there were going to be more women. Now, personally, I'm not in favour of uh, this sort of identity politics. I want people who are good for the job or not good for the job. And I couldn't care less as a woman whether, whether there are one women or 23 women in, in, in the cabinet. Um, but but if, she, if you're going to brief out, you're going to do that and then you don't do it, you look a bit silly, don't you? Well, I think that briefing it out is a bit 1980s, to be honest. I think that we're past that. We shouldn't be saying, well, one thing you're going to see is a whole new load of faces that happen to be brown and female. You know, I think that we're part, we should be past that as a nation. We should be saying that it's going to be a fresh new team uh, full of uh, innovat- innovative ideas. They're going to be ready to hit the ground running. And then we, we, work, we work out from them that it's actually a more diverse look to the Conservative Party than they've had before. We don't need to be told explicitly what they're going to be doing because I think that it's demeaning to them. You know, imagine being a young black Tory MP today and you get the phone call to say that we'd like you as a junior minister. Are you sitting there because you think to yourself, well, it's great because I've really worked hard since I've been, in, uh, been an MP and I'm glad my efforts have been recognised. Or do you think... Oh, is it because I'm black? Is it because I'm a female? Yeah. Is it because I've got disabilities? It's, 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 it's insulting. And I think we're beyond that now. And so we should never be briefing out in the first place. And then if we do have to, have to go down that route, then we should match the rhetoric. So, of course, everybody's labelling today as, oh, and here comes the diversity bit. And that kind of ruins the whole point and the whole effort. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that, you know... They're better off saying, we, you know, we're going to be lowering the ages of people that we want in our cabinet. We want younger, fresher people. And then, you know, there are many different ways you can say that it's going to have a different look to the Conservative Party than currently be. But, you know, luckily, you've got people like Brandon Lewis, the new party chairman, and James Cleverley. They know this kind of thing. They don't make those kind of mistakes. Well, we, they will be let to get on, get we on shall wait and see. Katie Perry, a pleasure to speak to you. Former Director of Communications, Theresa May at number 10. 